everyone, Sean Clement here at the Richmond Hill Golf Learning Center, headquarters for Wisdom in Golf. We're on the beautiful 10th hole, finally on the golf course. It's soaked like crazy. It rained all weekend again, but uh, the sun's back out and we got a nice video straight ahead for you. This is for those of you who are struggling with width and are looking in the wrong spots. How often do you hear, you know, when somebody collapses in the backswing, they say, keep the left elbow straight. Well, I have a few students like that, and them focusing on left elbow never worked. It was the right elbow that was the culprit. And uh, if you see, there's a couple of things that you can strap to your right bicep to prevent the right arm from collapsing into the backswing. And I got a couple of really nice analogies to help you through this, okay? Number one, if you ever see my daughter's swing, if you go to, you know, my, um, uh, there's a couple of videos out there with my daughter on it. And she very much slings the golf club like somebody throwing a javelin, okay? So if you ever watch on YouTube, you see somebody, I got my mock javelin here, pardon, this is like a hitting stick. But if you're throwing a long object out into the field, you wouldn't be doing it like this. Javelin throwers, as you, you'll see how they stretch everything out and they very much sling from the chest outwards through a very elongated arm. So there's a lot of width to that throw. They gotta keep that long unit away from them, okay? So it's a very much the same thing here. Now, as soon as we went to that analogy, Hugo went through the roof. It was fantastic. So first thing he experienced is, what we did is don't let the right arm fold. So to him, this felt like a straight right arm because he was used to doing this. He was used to letting that right arm collapse into his body. Now, if I was pushing a car out of a ditch, I'd be doing it from here. I wouldn't be doing it from here. I got no leverage here with my arms. So there's where I'm gonna find some leverage. If I'm hammering a nail, you notice when you take a hammer, you're not gonna do this. You're not gonna do this and hit yourself on the shoulder and collapse the arm. There's a very specific length in the arm that's ideal for leverage, and you tend to always find it, especially when you have a heavy object. The problem with the golf club is it's a very light object, and you can yank it around like a pit bull with a rag doll, and then you end up losing all kinds of, you know, extension because of that. So I'm looking for an extended right arm. So in my backswing, I'm feeling a very long right arm slinging through to my target. So for Hugo, it felt like his right arm wasn't folding at all, and we allowed him to feel a new way to whip the club. We allowed him to feel a new way to slash the sword. So you notice if you take a sword in your hand, you remember that fencing for power video? So if I take a sword and I wanna slash it through something, I'm not gonna do this. I'm not gonna collapse the arm. I've just lost all my leverage. So you notice that the arm tends to stay wide. So there's three gorgeous analogies for you to feel that beautiful width in your whip, okay? So a wide whipping action from the, the, the perspective of the right arm. That's where, your, that's where your attention's going to be. So wide backswing with the right arm out into a wide finish. So when the right arm stays wide going back, if it collapses, then everything's gonna be very narrow coming down. So the next, the next thing that you're gonna be aware of when you maintain that width is the downswing will feel way wider as well. The angle of attack through the shot is going to feel much wider. You'll be able to go along the ground instead of into the ground. You see how that works? So I'm gonna pick a spot in front of my ball here. I'll hit a nice shot for you. So left edge of that intermediate point, nice little fade back to the 150 marker. I'm playing a second shot here on a par five. I've got seven iron in my hands. So ball just a hair forward to center. I'm gonna do a practice swing above the ball. Wide, wide. So I'm feeling a wide release out there. Wide low to the sword wide low to the sword, or wide release of the sword, if, I, if you will. Here we go. So if I lower to the grass, and I feel that same wide whip left of that intermediate point, here we go. I'm just looking for the feel of that width in the whip. 
That felt stupendous. Very flush, left edge of the fairway, exactly where I want to be. So you notice how wispy that divot was. Notice very shallow divot on the way through. So for a seven iron, you know, and this is rain soaked stuff, I could have taken a beaver pelt out of this thing, but because I had that width all the way through, I have a wonderful divot, okay? So take your sword, feel how wide your right arm is when you take it back. You'll feel that, that you don't want it locked. Now it feels like I have to shove. Now all the emphasis has gone to my chest and, and my, my shoulder. Whereas here, ah, now it feels like I can whip. Yeah, now it feels like it's collapsed. Yes, I can whip. No, I can't. No, I can't. Yes, I can. Feel that wide whip through the shot, okay? Enjoy that, and we'll see you next week.